Hello and welcome to State of the Union. I'm Stefan Grober in Brussels. What a week this has been, and a bad week for nationalist and populist forces. French voters produced the reverse shocker by keeping the far right far away from power in the second round of the general election. On the European level, mushrooming far-right parliamentary groups are splintering the populist influence in the European Parliament. And the self-declared herald of peace, nationalist Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, found out the hard way what clout he has in the real world, and that is zero. Just days into his new role as rotating EU Council President, Orban traveled to Moscow and Beijing on what he bombastically called peace mission to end the war in Ukraine. Well, not only did he come back empty-handed, but he was also read the riot act by the rest of the EU. Here's Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk, who will take over the EU presidency in January. Że nikt nie ma prawa bez Ukrainy, a w imieniu Ukrainy decydować o przyszłym pokoju i jego kształcie. Nikt nie ma prawa występować w imieniu Polski czy całej Unii Europejskiej bez pełnego porozumienia z Ukrainą i z nami wszystkimi, jeśli chodzi o ewentualne rozmowy z Moskwą. Osobiście też będę i naprawdę skutecznie będę pilnował tego w Unii Europejskiej. Some member states are so angry at Budapest, they now even want to shorten the Hungarian presidency. There doesn't seem to go anywhere, but the first Hungary-chaired council meetings were snubbed by ministers who sent civil servants instead. Hungary could feel its isolation even more at the NATO summit in Washington, where U.S. President Joe Biden had this to say about Orban's bosom friend, Vladimir Putin. Putin wants nothing less, nothing less, than Ukraine's total subjugation to end Ukraine's democracy. Destroy Ukraine's, Ukraine's, Ukraine's culture and to wipe Ukraine off the map. And we know Putin won't stop at Ukraine. But make no mistake, Ukraine can and will stop Putin. The Washington summit was meant to present a united front and show that in its 75th year, the alliance is as strong as ever. But it was overshadowed by a series of crises of which questions about President Biden's fitness for office at 81 was probably the least of the problems. So what's in store for NATO going forward? Joining me now is Ian Lesser, Executive Director of the Brussels Office of the German Marshall Fund. Welcome to the program. Good to be with you. So President Biden has called the alliance the most unified it has ever been. But behind the scenes, the mood was rather gloomy. What are the most important challenges for NATO going forward? Well, above all, even though this is the 75th uh, anniversary and it has, a, in some sense, a celebratory character to it, uh, there is a war going on in Europe. There is an increasingly uh, dangerous relationship with Russia, uh, also a very competitive relationship with China. But it's above all, it's about uh, deterring and defending against Russia, but also providing Ukraine with what it needs uh, to defend itself. NATO is trying to inoculate itself against the disruptions and crises that Donald Trump might instigate should he return, trying to make itself Trump-proof, so to speak. Can this actually work? Well, NATO has had some experience with this. Of course, we don't know what the outcome will be in Washington. Uh, but even if Biden is reelected, there are going to be big challenges for NATO. Any American administration is going to keep coming to Europe and asking Europe to spend more and do more. And of course, NATO has been doing some of that, but the challenges are very large and the requirements are very big. Uh, but of course, that's a much more pointed issue if Trump is reelected. And, um, and there is some desire to try to put Europe in a more stable position in that regard. Yes, there is Trump, but there's also growing power of far-right forces unfriendly to NATO in Europe. How serious a problem is this for the alliance? Well, far-right, but also in some, in some cases also on the left, uh, parties that are not always supportive of the transatlantic relationship. Um, this too can be a problem. It can be a problem in terms of uh, policy towards Russia, support for Ukraine, defense spending. Uh, many of the parties who are seeking power in Europe uh, want to spend money on other things, on social programs at a time when uh, defense is, is demanding more spending. And, and that 
requirement is probably going to go on for years. So in a sense, the stresses exist in a political way on both sides of the Atlantic. Finally, there is a new secretary general in town. Um, is Mark Rutte the right man for steering NATO through stormy waters? Well, everything that is done at NATO, from the smallest to the largest thing, uh, is done by consensus. And uh, there are a few things more important than choosing a secretary general I, in very difficult times. And, and so I think the fact that uh, Mark Rutte was chosen uh, with a great deal of support, it wasn't very controversial, uh, it says something about where the alliance wants to go and the degree of confidence in his leadership. And I think that's probably correct. All right, Ian Lesser, Executive Director of the German Marshall Fund in Brussels. Thanks for coming on the show today. Always good to be with you. Thank you. Before we go, let's take a look at what's new in the world of arts. I like art. The bigger, the better. And here's Italian land artist Dario Gambarin with his latest work on a crop field outside of Verona. Using only a plow and a tractor, he drew the Eiffel Tower in dedication to the upcoming Olympics. It's a contribution to peace in hopes that sports will unite people all over the world, he says. Over in London's Kensington Gardens, a mammoth-sized pumpkin is quite the spectacle. The bronze sculpture is the largest pumpkin by Japanese artist Yayoi Kusama and is part of the Serpentine Gallery's public art program. Kusama's relationship with pumpkins is rooted in her childhood when her home was surrounded by squash. She admires pumpkins for their hardiness, their humorous forms, and their taste. There you have it. That's it for this edition. I'm Stefan Grobe. Thank you for watching. Have an excellent week.